Ever since I was a kid, I've wanted a portable Amiga or a Commodore machine. So, I know Commodore tried to develop a few, so they did the uh, Commodore LCD, which was like a couple of prototypes ever made. Little LCD kind of tablet, laptop thing. And uh, that never got released, sadly. And they also did this C64 carry case, which was this huge, like, handle on the C64. And then they had a CRT monitor in there as well. Uh, really nice, but, you know, it's giant. I couldn't see me lugging that into a coffee shop, even though there is a video on YouTube of someone actually doing that, which is pretty cool. Um, but what I want to do is something completely different. I want to make an Amiga laptop. Now... There's a lot of alternatives you could do. You could get a Raspberry Pi, you could put it in a machine, you could get one of these vampire standalones when they come out or whatever. But I want original hardware in there. And there's been quite a few attempts at portable or original hardware Amiga laptops. So there's been wooden ones, there was uh, Simon Archer's one. I actually remember meeting Simon when I was little and him talking about it, but uh, I'm sure he won't remember me, maybe my dad. And there was a few others. So I, I've seen like a portable case one recently. There was also Silent Pause, which was a kind of commercial effort to actually release conversion kits so that you can make your portable and Amiga little laptop. Now the problem with these, and the problem throughout the whole time has been power, because Amiga is a bit of a power hog. And you've got to have these little units, you've had to have them all connected uh, to the mains, which is really frustrating. Or you could carry around some car battery or something massively heavy. Now, technology's developed over time. So we've got these lithium ion batteries and I am absolutely rubbish at power. I don't ever touch power because I know I'm gonna blow stuff up. But I have a really good friend who's got an amazing channel called Dubious Engineering and it's Howard and he's actually going to help me with the power because he's just done a Raspberry Pi laptop. So we're planning on getting this machine, an Amiga original hardware to stand alone on lithium batteries and have it portable. I think he said it would run for around one or two hours operating. But let's have a word from Howard first. Hello everybody, it's Howard from Dubious Engineering. Um, just want to tell you about a special little project that we've got coming up. So uh, Retro Ravi, DJ Retro Ravi, uh, uh, has come up with a cracking idea and that is to take an Amiga and put together some battery packs for it and turn it into a fantastic laptop. So basically you end up with a portable Amiga with a sound system and a lovely screen and all self-contained. Obviously, me being me, and me being well into my 18650 lithium-ion batteries and all that kind of good stuff, Ravi's asked me if I can help him with this. So, here we are at the workbench, starting work. I'm really glad to be working with Howard because I'm absolutely awful with power. And, you know, it's going to be a little bit heavy, this laptop, but... Eventually we can make it smaller and smaller and kind of reduce everything, reduce the size of it and the footprint. And then I'll make the plans available for everyone and you can make your own or do whatever. And it would be great to see loads of mad Amiga kind of laptop projects coming out of this. Now I'm going to show you all the different parts that I've collected. Now the first part of this of course is the motherboard and this is an Amiga 600 motherboard bought from Marvin Drugsma. And He's just done a fantastic job on it. It's all been recapped by TSB here, and that means the capacitors have been replaced, so they're going to last a long time. And this is actually a June bug, which was um, Amiga 300. So it's an early version, and they kind of put the Amiga 300 name because that was going to be a cheaper motherboard and a, a cheaper machine, and then they put them in the Amiga 600, and uh, uh, yeah, we all know that story. Now... I didn't want to use the original Amiga keyboard because there's a lot of problems with how big the keys are uh, if I was going to have a flat top that you'd close it with. So I've got this USB adapter in and 
Of course, this is the first version, so we're just going to have a cheap generic USB keyboard. This is the said keyboard, and uh, it's absolutely rubbish and tacky. You can just stick it on the top there. I really just bought it for the size. And there you go. Also, we're keeping the RF shielding on the back because it's quite nice to have all these kind of holes and components already cut out. The next part is the display and the sound. So this is a really cool, nice little display, actually. Now, I do DJing and I use these little smaller versions of this. This is like the 10 inch version. And I was thinking, you know, a decent laptop size is about 13 inch. So I reckon 10 inch would be quite good. But, you know, it's going to have to get a bit bigger because it's going to have batteries in and stuff. Um, the side of this is quite thick because it's got all the boards and stuff at the back maybe later on I can reduce the size get it a bit thinner but the cool thing about this is it looks absolutely beautiful on composite like Amiga usually you need to get a scan double O and all of this but I didn't really want to spend any extra money and kind of have all these converters and stuff when I could just literally go composite into here and also left and right audio because this has built in speakers which is really cool so I'll be able to just straight away come out of the composite, have a re left and right audio, really basic at the moment. And people may be wondering about the mouse. I'm just going to have an external mouse at the moment. No floppy drive in there yet. Uh, we're going to see how it all kind of fits together. Now, it wouldn't be an Amiga without some of the original kind of things that we always recognise. So I've got the LEDs here and I've cut the wires because I'm going to extend them out and kind of have this near the keyboard so you'll be able to see the LEDs and also Howard's going to be doing a, a little meter that tells me how much battery life she had left and we'll be able to recharge it and stuff like that which is just insane. Um, I've also got these original Amiga 600 badge for it which is quite cool so we could have the Commodore branding but we also have some absolutely lovely Commodore branding that Marvin sent which was I don't know if this is off the CD TV at all and we've got a little boing ball because I've always wanted to have a boing ball on the back so people can look at it and go, what is that? It's not an apple. It's not an acorn. What is it? I'll put it all together. Let's see it working.